Our family's move to grandfather's old mansion came with unexpected inheritances, one being an intricately carved advent calendar. It was December 1st when we found it, hidden beneath layers of dust in the attic. The calendar was a masterpiece of craftsmanship, each door adorned with mysterious symbols and images. My sister Emily and I were drawn to its antiquity, unaware of the secrets it held. The first door opened to reveal a miniature painting of a raven perched on a bare branch. That night, a real raven tapped incessantly at our window, its eyes eerily reflective in the moonlight. Mom tried to dismiss it as a coincidence, but her voice quivered, betraying a deep-rooted fear. The mansion, with its creaking floors and whispering walls, seemed to echo the raven's call, enveloping us in a shroud of unease. Each subsequent door unveiled more cryptic images, an hourglass with sand almost run out, a faded portrait of a woman with sorrowful eyes, a wilted rose. Strange occurrences accompanied each revelation. Shadows danced in corners where there was no light. Cold drafts swept through closed rooms, and distant whispers filled the silent nights. Dad, ever the skeptic, struggled to find logical explanations but the tension in his furrowed brow spoke volumes. As Christmas drew nearer, the air in the mansion grew denser, charged with a foreboding energy. Emily became withdrawn, her dreams haunted by visions of the mansion's past, scenes of anguish and whispered secrets of a hidden curse. The calendar, once an object of fascination, now felt like a countdown to something ominous, each open door bringing us closer to an unknown dread that lay in wait. By December 12th, the advent calendar had become the heart of our fear. The images grew darker, a broken mirror, a clock striking midnight, a shadowy figure with a concealed face. The mansion responded in kind. Mirrors fogged without cause, clocks stopped at midnight, and we felt watched by unseen eyes. The festivity of the season was lost to us, replaced by a chilling anticipation of what each new door would bring. Our search for answers led us to the mansion's hidden library, where we found Grandfather's journal. It detailed a tragic event in our family's history, tied to the advent calendar. A curse, he wrote, had been placed upon our bloodline, its origins shrouded in mystery, its effects devastating. The calendar was not just marking days until Christmas, but counting down to the reawakening of this ancient curse. The tension within the family escalated. Mom's comforting smiles couldn't mask her growing anxiety, and Dad's rational demeanor crumbled as unexplainable phenomena became our daily reality. Emily, sensitive and intuitive, grew paler by the day, her sleep disturbed by nightmares of past tragedies replaying in endless loops. We felt trapped in a cycle of fear, each day's door unveiling a piece of a puzzle we were desperate yet hesitant to complete. Our desperation peaked when we opened a door to find a depiction of the mansion engulfed in flames. That night, the air grew hot, and the smell of smoke filled our rooms. Hallucinations, perhaps, but terrifyingly real to us. The calendar was no longer a mere heirloom. It was a harbinger of doom, each open door a step closer to a dark fate that we were struggling to understand and prevent. December 23rd arrived with a heavy sense of impending doom. The penultimate door revealed a family portrait, but with faces we didn't recognize, their eyes crossed out in red. The mansion felt alive, its walls pulsing with a sinister energy. We were on the edge, our nerves frayed, the weight of our ancestors' curse bearing down on us. In a race against time, we scoured Grandfather's journal for a way to break the curse. It mentioned a ritual, one that required confronting the past and righting a wrong done by our ancestors. The specifics were vague, lost to time, but our determination was fueled by desperation. We gathered in the mansion's ancient hall, the heart of our family's history, and began the ritual with a mix of fear and hope. As we chanted the words from the journal, the mansion groaned and shuddered, as if resisting our efforts to break free from its grasp. Ghostly apparitions flickered in and out of existence, scenes of the past playing out before us, grief, betrayal a quest for redemption. Emily, tears streaming down her face, led the ritual with a resolute voice, her connection to the past guiding us. The final door of the calendar opened on its own on Christmas Eve, revealing an empty space, a void waiting to be filled. As the ritual reached its climax, 
the curse lifted, the oppressive atmosphere dissipating like mist in the morning sun. The mansion, freed from the shadows of its past, felt lighter, as if it had exhaled a breath it had been holding for centuries. Our family embraced, relief and peace washing over us. The curse was broken, the legacy of the last door undone, and our future was ours to write, free from the shadows that had haunted our bloodline. In the quaint town of Everlight, the annual Christmas light display competition was an event that brought everyone together. The streets glimmered like a fairy tale, with each house outshining the last in a friendly rivalry. I, Jamie, a 17-year-old with a keen eye for oddities, noticed something peculiar this year. The lights, usually warm and inviting, cast unsettling shadows, transforming the cozy town into a scene from a sinister storybook. The townsfolk, absorbed in their festive preparations, didn't notice the eerie change. That is, until people started disappearing. Mrs. Henderson, the sweet old lady from the corner house, vanished first. The only trace left of her was a flickering string of lights in her front yard, which for a fleeting moment displayed a morbid image of a distorted face. I felt a chill down my spine. The lights weren't just decorations, they were omens. Every night the town grew quieter and the lights grew bolder, casting grotesque images that seemed to dance mockingly. I could feel the terror creeping into my bones as I watched from my bedroom window. The once joyful lights, now a source of fear. My friends, noticing my distress, brushed it off as holiday stress. But I knew it was more. Something malevolent was at play, feeding off our Christmas spirit. Determined to uncover the truth, I ventured out one eerie evening. The once familiar streets now felt alien and threatening. The lights flickered in a sinister rhythm, as if guiding me towards something. That's when I heard it a faint whisper coming from the lights themselves. It spoke of hunger, of feeding on the joy and corrupting it. I realized with horror that we were under the control of a malevolent entity. The entity, a shadow lurking within the luminous display, revealed its purpose to me. It was ancient, feeding on the emotions of humans, and it had found the perfect hunting ground in Everlight. The Christmas lights were its conduits, channeling our festive spirits directly to it, warping our joy into something dark and twisted. I shared my discovery with my best friend Mark, a skeptic by nature. He laughed it off until he witnessed the lights flickering to reveal an image of his missing sister. The terror in his eyes mirrored my own. We needed to act, but the town was in the entity's grip, lulled into a false sense of security by the twinkling lights. Our plan was simple, yet risky. We decided to sabotage the light displays, cutting off the entity's source of power. Armed with wire cutters and a sense of desperate courage, we moved under the cover of night. Each snip of the wires felt like a small victory, but with every cut, the entity's presence grew angrier, the air charged with a malevolent energy. The town began to stir, the residents waking from their entranced state, confused and scared. The entity, weakened but not defeated, lashed out, casting horrifying illusions in the sky. The very air seemed to crackle with dark energy, and I feared we might be too late to save Everlight from its luminous grasp. The final confrontation was upon us. The town, now aware of the danger, rallied together. We were no longer isolated individuals. We were a community, united against a common enemy. The entity, sensing its waning power, became more desperate, its illusions more terrifying. But we were resolute, our newfound unity a beacon of hope in the encroaching darkness. As we worked to dismantle the last of the lights, the entity materialized, a swirling mass of shadows and flickering lights. It spoke of despair, trying to break our spirit, but we stood firm. The power of our collective hope and determination was palpable, a force stronger than any malevolent spirit. In a final act of defiance, I climbed to the top of the town's Christmas tree the heart of the light display, and the entity's stronghold. With every bulb I removed, the entity's hold on the town weakened. The air was filled with a chorus of encouragement from the townspeople below, their voices a symphony of resistance. With one last tug, the tree went dark, and the entity let out a piercing scream before dissolving into nothingness. The town was plunged into darkness, but it was a darkness filled with relief and triumph. 
We had broken free from the entity's grasp. Our Christmas spirit no longer a source of nourishment for the darkness. Everlight had found its true light again, not in the dazzling displays, but in the hearts of its people, united and strong. In Winter's Hollow, a village nestled amidst snow-laden hills, our first Christmas Eve promised to be a magical experience. Jamie and I, having recently moved away from the city's glamour, were enchanted by the village's serene beauty. The quaint cottages with their frosted windows and the soft glow of fairy lights created an almost ethereal atmosphere. However, as night approached, a subtle unease settled over me, contrasting sharply with the day's idyllic charm. The villagers had spoken in reverent, hushed tones about the mysterious carolers who visited each Christmas Eve. Dressed in archaic, tattered garb, they appeared as shadows against the snow, their faces hidden beneath deep hoods. Their singing, a cascade of haunting melodies, seemed to echo endlessly through the frosty air. As they sang, a peculiar drowsiness overcame the listeners, their tunes weaving a spellbinding lull. Standing at our doorstep, we watched our neighbors, faces illuminated by the flickering candlelight, listening in a trance-like state. Jamie, usually skeptical of village lore, was visibly mesmerized, his gaze locked on the spectral figures. A chill ran down my spine, not from the cold, but from the mournful depth in the carolers' eyes, their voices not just harmonious, but laden with a deep, unspoken sorrow. The carolers departed, leaving behind a tangible silence. Back inside, the warmth of our fireplace did little to dispel the unsettling sensation that clung to us. In bed, the melodies replayed in my mind, their haunting beauty intertwined with a sense of foreboding, hinting at a hidden, sorrowful tale yet to be uncovered. The village awoke to an air of melancholy. Mrs. Elwood, a beloved elderly resident, was nowhere to be found. Whispered conversations among the villagers linked her disappearance to the caroler's visit. The village elder, a stoic figure marked by time, shared a grim tale that turned our blood cold. The carolers, he revealed, were spirits from a tragic chapter in the village's history, bound to return each Christmas Eve. Their celestial melodies harbored a dark curse, claiming a villager annually to join their mournful procession. Jamie and I were shaken by this revelation. The enchanting carolers were harbingers of doom, their visitation a grim reminder of a past that refused to rest. The elder's story spoke of a long ago disaster that had befallen the village, a night of sorrow that gave birth to the spectral chorus. The spirits trapped in their eternal lament sought companionship in their loneliness, their songs a siren call to the living. Determined to protect ourselves, we decided to uncover more about the village's past, hoping to find a way to break the cycle. Delving into old records and forgotten tales, we learned about a catastrophic event that had occurred many generations ago, on a Christmas Eve much like this one. The tragedy had left a permanent scar on the village, giving rise to the annual visitation of the carolers. As the hours passed, a sense of impending doom grew. The thought of another night under the carolers' spell was unbearable. We had to act, but the solution seemed as elusive as the spirits themselves. Our only hope lay in unraveling the mystery of the tragedy, to perhaps offer peace to the restless souls and save ourselves from their haunting melody. The day passed in a blur of anxiety and hurried research. As night descended upon Winter's Hollow, the carolers returned, their figures emerging from the snowy twilight like phantoms. This time their presence filled us with dread, the beauty of their song overshadowed by the grim reality of their purpose. The village, once a haven, now felt like a trap, its festive lights flickering ominously in the encroaching darkness. Jamie and I, armed with our newfound knowledge, faced the carolers with a mix of fear and resolve. Their eyes, glowing faintly under their hoods, seemed to recognize our intent. We confronted them with the truth of their tragedy, speaking words of forgiveness and solace, hoping to break the cycle of sorrow that bound them to this world. The carolers paused, their song faltering for the first time. A profound stillness enveloped the village, the snowy landscape holding its breath. In that moment of silence, a transformation began. 
The spectral figures, their faces etched with years of grief, started to fade, their expressions softening into looks of peace and gratitude. As the last of the spirits vanished, a gentle snow began to fall, blanketing the village in a serene calm. The curse was lifted, the carolers freed from their eternal lament. Winter's Hollow was safe once more, its residents spared from the haunting chorus. Jamie and I embraced, relief washing over us. The village had been given a new beginning, free from the shadows of its past. The carolers song, now a distant memory, left behind a legacy of hope and the power of redemption. <laughs>